Hi everyone, this is Zach Peanut and welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to share to you the questions that they asked me when I had my K1 fiancé visa interview at the U.S. Embassy in Seoul, South Korea. I know that there are a lot of videos out there that talk about the possible questions that they are asking the applicants, the K1 fiancé visa applicants during a K1 fiancé visa interview. But in this video, I want to share to you only the exact questions that they asked me when I had my K1 fiancé visa interview. So if you are applying for K1 fiancé visa, and you are still waiting for your interview and you're kind of curious what kind or what type of questions that they are asking the applicants during a K1 fiancé visa interview, I invite you to continue watching this video and please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again in 30 seconds. K1 fiancé visa interview at the U.S. Embassy in Seoul, South Korea last June 2019 and I've been here in the United States for more than two years now. Obviously, I passed the interview. It was so easy. And if you are wondering why did I have my interview in Seoul, South Korea, even though I'm a Filipino and from the Philippines, is that I think that there, uh, in it's I think it's in the DS-160 that there is one question that asks about the nearest embassy. So when I filled out the DS-160, I was working, I was living in South Korea, so I wrote U.S. Embassy Seoul, South Korea instead of U.S. Embassy Manila, Philippines, because if I would have an interview and I was in South Korea, it would be uh, very complicated because I had to uh, go back to the Philippines for my just for my interview and then come back to South Korea. So I, I wrote U.S. Embassy Seoul, South Korea. Based on the questions that they asked me during my K1 fiancé visa interview, there are three things that the consular officer wants to know. And this is just based on my opinion, based on the questions that they asked me. First, whether your relationship with your fiancé is genuine or not. Number two is whether your fiancé will be able to support you financially when you arrive in the United States, when you're already living here in the United States. And third, whether you are a threat or not to the security of the United States. So based on those three things, these are the questions that they asked me when I had my K1 fiancé visa interview. Number one, who petitioned you? And there are a lot of ways to rephrase that question, like what is the name of your petitioner? But the exact question that they asked me is who petitioned you? And obviously, I know the name of my fiancé. I don't know if you know the name of your fiancé, but it's so important that you know the complete name of your fiancé. So to answer the question, I gave the complete name of my fiancé. And then they asked me a follow-up question. Tell me about your fiancé or tell me about him. And that question is just like an, um, it's just like a question when you're applying for a job in any of you, like tell me about yourself. And um, but this this uh, question is um, telling something about your fiance and not about yourself. So that's why it's so important that you know a lot of things about your fiance, and because that will prove that you are that you uh, really know each other very well, and that will also prove that your relationship is genuine because you share a lot about uh, each other. So I answered that question by uh, first telling where my fiancé was living and then be before I could continue, um, the interviewer or the consular officer interrupted me because uh, he said he's not familiar with the place that I mentioned. So I had to explain where the place was located. And I think that the reason why he asked me about that, I don't know if he was just pretending that he did not know, he was not familiar about uh, the places here in California, is that he wanted me to know that I really know the place, that I, I really know, I, I really know a lot of things about where my fiance is living. And so I had to explain to him like how, 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 how far it is from Sacramento, the capital, the capital city of California. And then the next question that he asked me is, 
do you know his work? Do you, um, so uh, uh, that question, do you know his work, is similar to uh, what what does he do for a living or uh, what is his job? So I answered the question by keep, by um, telling him that he is a professor, and um, he, and then there was a follow up question: Do you know what subject he teaches? And I know the subject that he teaches that he has been teaching. So I I had to uh, explain it to the consular officer. And then the consular officer asked me, "So he is your boyfriend?" And I answered yes, but I had to clarify that he was my fiancé. And as you may already know, there is a difference between the words boyfriend or the terms boyfriend and fiancé. And um, when you say fiancé, that means that you have already agreement, that you already um, agreed that you will get married, and that you are already engaged to get married. Because um, for K-1 fiancé visa, uh, within 90 days after arriving in the United States, you uh, you should be able to get married and I was so excited to tell him that he was my fiance we were engaged and we are ready to get married the next question is have you met his parents when I had my interview I had not met my his parents yet my husband's parents but um, I, I I had a chance to talk to uh, his mother through uh, Facebook video video chat so um, I, I, I explained to the consular officer that I was not able to meet the family in person but I was able to talk to them through Facebook Messenger when was the last time you physically saw each other so when was the last time you physically saw each other and uh, when I had my interview uh, six months before that my fiance now my husband uh, visit, uh, went back to South Korea and then we went to Thailand together so we spent our Christmas in Thailand so I explained to the consular officer that I met we met each other the last time we met each other was in Thailand and that was in December last Christmas of 2018 The next question is, do you think he makes a lot of money? I thought the question was funny, but I had to explain to the counselor officer that in California, I think that um, my husband was making a lot. That is in California standard. And I had to tell him the, the salary that my husband is making a year. And uh, uh, the reason why I, I had to give the consular officer the exact amount, the exact salary, is uh, I wanted him to know that uh, we talk about financial matters and that is a proof proof that um, your relationship is genuine but I did not want to sound like I only wanted to come to the United States marry my husband for money I did not want to sound like that so I had to be careful with my answer the next question that he asked me is you are from the Philippines why did you decide to apply here at first I did not understand the question I, I did not hear it well so I had to ask him uh, sorry what was the question Will you please repeat it for me and then he, he repeated the question for me and as I already explained to you in this video I explained to uh, the consular officer that I was working in South Korea that's why I applied in South Korea instead of applying in the Philippines and then the last question, uh, I think they ask this for, they ask this question to every applicant. And the question is, have you ever been arrested, brought to jail, or in any way caught by a police officer? Of course, never. I was never arrested. I, I don't have a criminal record. And then after that, he held the uh, Imbra pamphlet and he showed it to me and he asked me if I read it, if I understood it, and I answered him that I read and I that I read it and I understood everything that's in it. So those were the questions that they asked me when I had my K1 Fiancé Visa interview. And I just want to uh, give you some tips on how to uh, pass the K1 Fiancé Visa interview. And I think the best thing is that um, you always talk to your fiancé. Um, especially if you are in a long distance relationship. I was kind of like, you know, um, I was kind of, sometimes there are days, there were days that I was irritated because um, 
my fiance, you know, my husband always wanted to talk to me like every day, like every morning, um, lunch, before I go to bed. He wanted, always wanted to call me. So there was never a day that we miss talking to each other, that we miss calling each other. And um, I only realized the importance of that when I had my K1 fiance visa interview is that because um, it helps you to know each other a lot. So uh, always talk about um, other things like um, each other's family, about each other's job, like even small details. Because like I read, I, I read a post on Facebook. Um, another K1 fiance in South Africa. They asked him what he, first. He, he he said on his post that he did not pass the interview, and he thought that just because of two questions and that those were like funny questions, like. And I don't know why, I don't know if that was true, and I don't know if um, that was the reason why he failed the interview. But uh, the question, the questions were, do you know the color of his bed sh of her bed sheet? Do you know the color of her bed sheet? And do you know the color of his car? I don't know, and because he did not know the color of the bed sheet and the color of the car, and I don't understand why they would ask those questions. And I think maybe because. Um, I think maybe because uh, the consular officer was so doubtful and yeah so if the consular officer at the interview were has doubt about your relationship they would ask you like questions like that just to prove that your relationship is really genuine and I was so glad because um, I was able to prove that our relationship is genuine so um, again I would like to uh, tell you that um, you have to uh, be able to prove that your relationship is genuine, that your fiancé is able to support you financially when you're already here in the United States and that you are uh, not a threat to the country. I hope that you learned something from this video and I hope that uh, it will help you prepare for your K-1 fiancé visa interview. And if you have questions or if you have any suggestions like how I will improve my um, video next time, feel free to comment them and I'll see you again on my next videos. Thank you and have a good day.